Good evening, good evening, good evening, and good evening. Uh, welcome to another No Tanks live stream. Um, tonight I'm going to be talking about FRC diving. So uh, it's uh, uh, as a uh, as a sport. Free diving is subject to lots of trick and trendy trends. Can you have a trendy trend? I suppose it's trendy trend. Um, and, but one of the things that popped up about one of the training exercises that popped up maybe five years ago, maybe a bit longer, was FRC diving. And it's endured a little bit longer than most trends. So I thought I would kind of give you a resume about it. Is it... Um, the, the a game changing training system exercise or is it just gibberish so before we go on i'm going to give you a quick uh, update we've got uh, pool sessions hopefully start hopefully starting at the end of may we still have space for free fest at the end of july and uh, and a, a yacht trip at the end of september everything else Ah, the dive off, of course. Um, everything else seems to be pretty much sold out. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, so getting back to some sort of training system. Training system, training schedule, training diary, that'll do. Calendar, something like that. Okay, so FRC diving. So FRC stands for Functional Residual Capacity. Um, and... It's a type of empty lung training. Now, empty lung training can be uh, a part of a really good training system. It's, uh, uh, um, yeah, it can be. It doesn't have to be. Uh, it's not essential, but it can be uh, and should be, I think, included in uh, training systems or training schedules uh, for three reasons. You have flexibility, tolerance, and awareness. So, flexibility, tolerance and awareness unfortunately most people who use frc if anybody anybody who uses the word frc is automatically being non-specific about how un, 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 how full your breath is Okay, I'm going to explain all the technicals, so don't worry. We're not going to. I'm not going to bamboozle you. I'm going to explain it in simple terms. But anybody who uses the word FRC is being non-specific, which means any sort of performance they talk about is going to be is going to be. Hang on. Ego related. <coughs> yeah, guaranteed, it can't not be, because it's non-specific, and so anything else is going to be uh, kind of non-specific and they're basically they're displaying a, a non-understanding of the physiology or the reason why you're doing the exercise so there's two reasons two sides of it so anybody using frc exercises is you know no, not anybody most people uses who even mention FRC exercises are demonstrating they have uh, a not an understanding of the physiology and not an understanding of why you're doing the exercise. In fact, no, I'm going to say everybody. Right, so what do we mean by FRC? Functional residual capacity. Okay, this is also known as passive lung. So instead of a let me move back slightly. It's better of a full lung. Well, I'm filling the belly, filling the chest, and even filling the clavicular. Full lung full. Okay? An empty lung. Where I breathe out everything and squeeze, 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 squeeze. Maybe even a couple of un unpacks. I can't talk because I've got no air left. Okay? I'm empty, empty, empty. So full to empty. About halfway between is FRC, okay? Um, so here's the picture that you'll get when you go on a course, okay? So, um, that's the picture. So total lung capacity is literally from zero to full, 
okay, for full, 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 full. Uh, when I've breathed out everything I can, there's always a little bit left in there, the air that, that keeps the alveoli, alveoli open, okay? A little bit left in there. That's called the residual volume. You can't get rid of it, okay? So uh, between uh, the residual volume uh, and the top, is, is that's what you call a vital capacity, the bit you can use, okay? I'm not gonna go into the others particularly, but FRC is halfway between the two, roughly. Let me, let me explain. When uh, the lung tissue elastic recoil, technical, is in equilibrium, is equal to the chest wall outward expansion in other words when uh, the, the the falling of the chest is equal to the like the outward pressure of the chest it's in neutral okay so let's try this take a deep breath in you have to force air into your belly force air into your lungs and then just relax that's frc you can still breathe out some more. You can pull in the belly, squeeze the chest. That's residual. Relax again. That's FRC, where the belly falls, the chest opens up, just because of the springiness of the lungs inside. That's FRC, functional residual capacity. Most people breathe all day, every day from FRC just a little bit of tidal and then relax. A little bit of tidal and then relax. Okay? That's lazy breathing. Now, this is actually, FRC is a medical term and it describes very precisely that layer where you're not, for, you're not actively breathing in, you're not actively breathing out, you're just neutral. Okay? This is where we do the non-holds or the no-name holds, or the passive holds, or whatever you want to call them, okay? Which are the nicest breath holds ever. And we're going to be doing that later in, the ex later in this uh, live stream. I'm going to take you through some non-holds specifically so you know what it feels like to be there at the FRC. Okay. Important things you need to know about FRC is it changes with your body position. Okay, so if I go to FRC, if I sit up nice and straight, breathe in and just relax, <sighs> sigh breath or passive exhale, <sighs> FRC. And then I lean forward, it squeezes out a little bit more air. But technically, I'm still at FRC. Okay, this is the point that I try and made, made, I made right at the beginning where. FRC is non-specific. It's not of you can calculate it, but it's different depending on how you're sitting. You lean forwards, your lungs are being squished a bit by the weight of your chest forwards and blah, okay. Equally well, if you have water up to this level, and if you're holding on a rope or a buoy and you're bobbing around in the water, the pressure of the water will reduce your FRC. It's non-specific. Okay. If you're laying face down in the water, laying on your back in the water, these will change the, the way your lungs react. So when somebody says, I can do 20 meters, FRC, they're talking gibberish. They're talking utter gibberish. Because you go 20 meters, what? Well, did you breathe up like this? Did you breathe up on your back? Did you breathe up on your front with a snorkel? How'd you breathe up? Because that affects your FRC. But the next point is people start to show off yeah well i've done 20 meters frc you've done 20 meters i've done 30 meters and as soon as you get into this kind of little i wait for it ego <clears throat> that's going to take over because it's so easy to change your frc to to do a passive lung yeah hang on a sec watch this am i frc now I'm at FRC. Am I at FRC? No, I'm a little bit too far. <coughs> <coughs> so 
sorry, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a nut caught in my throat. Okay. So the point is, you can change it. I'm not going to say, I nearly said cheat it, but you can change it, which means it comes back to honesty. And honesty is your honesty with yourself, which comes to the next point of people don't understand, maybe not FRC, but they, you know, they may not understand FRC, but they definitely don't understand what's the purpose of the exercise. Okay, because another thing people say is, oh yeah, 30 meters FRC is the same as 50 meters constant weight. No, it's not, that's gibberish. 50 meters constant weight is the only thing that's the same as 50 meters constant weight. Because the swimming involved, the tag grab, the, the judge, if you do 50 meters kind of constant weight, who's to say you didn't do two pulls? That's why you have a judge. Who's to say you actually stayed there long enough to grab the tag? That's why you have a judge. So unless you do it in competition, you're not doing it constant weight. And you're definitely not doing the same as uh, 50 meters constant weight if you do 30 meters FRC. Because who's checking that you did absolutely passive? Who's checking where the water was? Were you kind of up high? Were you down low, laying on your back, laying on your front? So it's just gibberish. It's just gibberish. Okay? So, why would you do FRC? This is where we're talking about what's the point of it and, and people understanding the point of it. If you are increasing your flexibility you don't have to get into water. You can do the bedtime stretches, which I've gone through in live streams like 10, 15 times before. Bedtime stretches create the flexibility required to go deep. I sat with Guillaume Neri before his 139 meter dive. And, uh, and he said, Marcus, I haven't, you know, I haven't been in the water for a long while. You got any exercises to get me it hadn't been in the water. It hadn't been deep in the water for a long while. Uh, and have you got any exercises that could help me? And we sat on the st steps of Sipa, and I showed him the, the like the third or fourth level of bedtime stretches. And he went, "Wow, that feels like I'm at 120 meters." Bearing in mind his 139 meter dive, he was trying to do 129 meters. So. You don't. You can replicate 120 meters sitting dry. You don't need water, okay. But you can use water. So you can do empty lung dives and then immerse yourself in water, and it will create more pressure. Okay. But you're when you're doing this, it's better to know the depth you're dealing with and then build up uh, and use the empty lung depending on the depth you're going to. For instance, and I know you know I don't talk about depth very often, if you're in a swimming pool that's three meters deep, you're kind of limited to three meters, all right? So doing an FRC to the bottom of a swimming pool is pointless. Doing a partial lung, you know, for pressure changes, yeah? So you have to do empty lung or empty lung and a couple of unpacks because you're only going to three meters. The point being, you know whether you could equalize at the bottom, and you know how many times you unpacked. You know, and it's honesty in that exercise to know whether you equalized at the bottom. And the idea is you're not meant to equalize at the bottom. If you'd equalized at the bottom, you, could, you, should, have gone, you should have gone more empty. You see what I mean? So FRC being a non-specific value I mean, it's, a, it's medically defined, but in every situation it's different. Doing an FRC dive doesn't mean anything. If you go to our local lake, Raysbury, we know that, that you know roughly it's eight meters if we're doing it on one of the platforms or five on the other. We know roughly how deep it is. We're not going to suddenly go to 20 meters. It's just not going to happen. So we can do um, unpacking 
empty lung exercises to practice our flex or increase the flexibility down to the to the bottom of the leg. Yeah. But you know how much you unpacked before you went. And having that honesty means you come up and you high five your buddy. I did it. Bam. He doesn't care what you did. Okay? He might say, what'd you do? I did I did I did more than I did before. And he's happy for you because you've improved. But as soon as you go, well, I did FRC to 25 and I did FRC to 20, you're starting to put numbers and the ego comes in and you there's an incentive to be non-honest. In other words, I'll go then. I'm not quite at FRC. That's FRC, but I'm going at you know, a little bit higher than FRC. It's going to make you go a little bit deeper. And then you're going to come back and, I did 25 as opposed to 24. But it's no better. No, it doesn't help anybody. As soon as you put that number on it, like, you're trying to beat that number. Okay? Much better is to do super, super, super unpacked. Go down. I can't equalize to whatever, where, where you're sitting on a boat or whatever in Raysbury. And you do the same every week and then one week you'll get it you'll get an equalization you'll go yes i did something i couldn't do before and you high five your buddy he doesn't care what it is he doesn't care how how many unpacks did you do it doesn't it doesn't doesn't he doesn't ask that he's just happy that you did something because you've improved and you know you've improved because you're 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 aware of yourself okay empty lung exercises also help with tolerance Tolerance to uh, low O2 and high CO2. They do that. You hold your breath, empty lung, CO2 builds up super quick. O2 drops off real quick because you've got not much reserves of O2. Empty lung is going to be good. But again, FRC is non-specific. So as soon as you get a stopwatch out and you're doing FRC, it is gibberish. Because again... Am I at FRC now? Or am I at FRC now? Or FRC now? Yeah. Which one is FRC? And if you're honest, and you're doing it exactly on FRC every time, maybe there's some merit to it. Unless, of course, you're sitting differently, or in water, or wearing a tight wetsuit, a three mil wetsuit, different from a five mil wetsuit, etc., etc., etc. So it doesn't mean anything. And the third reason you do uh, empty lung exercises, so I said you use them for flexibility, use them for tolerance, uh, low O2, high CO2, and you do it for awareness. For instance, death walks, where you walk, empty lung, and f turn where you think you're halfway through the walk, uh, through your walk, and then come back to the start. Yeah, and it's finding that little sweet spot where you should have turned around. Now, if you do it full lung, that sweet spot's massive, and you've got a massive, uh, you know, range. If you do it empty lung, it narrows it to one or two paces. Okay, so we don't care whether it's FRC or a little bit more than FRC or a little bit less than FRC, because you are the one who's trying to find that sweet spot, and it's your honesty as to when you get back. To the beginning, you go, yeah, that was a little bit harder than I wanted it to be. I walked too far. And that's only you being honest with yourself. Or, that was super easy. I could have gone a couple of paces more. The feeling I had when I turned wasn't halfway through the dive. The feeling I had when I turned was a little bit shallow or a little bit deep. That's why they're called depth walks. But we don't know. We don't know how much. We don't care whether it's empty, empty, or FRC, or whatever. It doesn't care. It's all about the awareness. Okay, so go back to the beginning. Empty lung exercises are fantastic for flexibility, where if you're just training flexibility, you're trying to do the maximum amount of flexibility. Doesn't matter about the, the depth or how much air, it's the flexibility you're trying to improve, and you know that. Tolerance. Well, you know, uh, tolerance to uh, low O2, high CO2. You can do empty lung exercises like that. Go for a run, hold your breath. Go for a run and hold your breath, empty lung. The empty lung breath holds are going to be super harder. Okay. 
and it's up to you whether you make it, you know, whether you do it full lung or empty lung. You know it's going to be super hard or empty lung, but, you know, oh, I did it FRC. It doesn't really make any sense. And then you've got awareness, which, again, is talking about uh, the whole point of the awareness is your awareness with what the exercise you're doing. So FRC doesn't really matter. On the bad side, when, or when people start invoke, you know, talking about FRC, it's non-specific, usually ego-driven, and is shows a non-understanding of physiology, because anybody who says I did an FRC dive, they didn't. They just like because unless they say I did an FRC dive in this water, in this wetsuit, in this position, it, they, they, they they didn't do an FRC dive. It is physically impossible. You, you're missing out pieces. So anybody who says FRC dive has no understanding of what they're saying. It doesn't make sense. It's gibberish. It's gibberish. Okay, so let's find our FRC. For you today, right now, sitting in the position you are. Eyes closed. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. No pause at the top, no pause at the bottom. Make sure if you're sitting on a don't do this if you're driving. If you're listening to this on your uh, on your phone as you're driving, don't do this. Or have operating heavy machinery. Eyes closed. Breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. No pause at the top or the bottom. Feet flat on the floor. Hands hanging or placed on your lap. Elbows heavy. Shoulders dropping. And we're breathing into the belly. Fill the belly. Then fill the chest. And let the chest drop, and then pull the belly back. We're not doing full inhalations, not doing full exhalations. I'm just trying to bring your awareness to breathing into the belly, into the chest, and then relax the chest and the belly collapse. And then you pull the belly back to squeeze out some more air. And then relax, the belly falls forwards, drawing in air. And then we fill the belly and maybe a bit of chest. And then we relax. Chest drops, belly falls backwards. And then we pull the belly back and pull the chest in. And then we relax. Belly falls forwards. Air comes in. And then we force the belly out and to get a deeper breath. Keep breathing like this. Now... We've talked about this on many occasions, or I've talked about many occasions on, on the live streams. How there's four parts to the breath. There's the passive inhalation, followed by the active inhalation. Passive exhalation, followed by the pa um, active exhalation. And there's a, pause, uh, there's a, a top node, a bottom node, and a middle node where you transition. Usually we try and transition effortlessly, with no pause. Just keep going and just do this breathing. So breathe out completely, pull in the belly back, and then just let the belly fall forwards, and pause there just for a second. And then actively push the belly out, filling the belly, fill the chest to the top, then relax. And pause for a second before we pull the belly back and then squeeze the chest. And then relax, let the belly fall forwards. And then actively fill the belly, fill the chest to the top and then relax. This is the passive bit as it drops. That's FRC. And pull the belly back actively, squeezing out air. And then relax. This is a passive bit. Air gets drawn in. That's FRC. And then actively fill the belly, fill the chest. And then relax the passive part. That's FRC. Just be aware of that for a few seconds. And then I'm going to get you to do a breath hold at that neutral point. So you should be breathing in now, probably. Filling the belly, filling the chest, all the way to the top. 
then relax, passively let everything drop. Stop there. Mouth open. Nasal passages open. If you're super good at it, or if you've been uh, you know, warming up for this, at this point here, you should feel your heartbeat moving air in through the nose and mouth. And squeeze the belly, squeeze some air out, and then relax, let the belly fall forwards. Pause there. Mouth open. Actively draw air in to the belly, to the chest, all the way to the top. Then relax, let everything drop. And then start breathing normally again. Close the mouth, straighten your spine, put your head straight, chin tucked in. In through the nose, now through the nose. Rub the hands together in front of you. Get into the habit of bringing yourself back, even though we've only done a short exercise. Cover the eyes, open your eyes behind the hands, and drop the hands away. So, those breath holds we did, they were at FRC. For you, sitting in the position that you're sitting, that was FRC. And you can feel how delicate it is. You know, if you leant forward or if you had a, you know, something in your small of your back, it's going to affect where that point is. There you go. So, hopefully, that little discussion has uh, helped you understand FRC, the pros and cons. Empty lung diving, it's good for flexibility, tolerance and awareness. FRC diving is bad because it's non-specific, usually ego-driven, and shows an under a non-understanding of the physiology behind it because it's non-specific. If you see. Okay, thanks for staying with us, and we'll see you next week uh, on Monday night at seven o'clock for another live stream. Any questions, put it in the messages uh, and I'll get back to you. Any questions that you want answered on the next live stream, please message me through Facebook and I'll get onto it as soon as I can.